Hello everyone, my name is Erika and today I will be continuing the creation of assets in Procreate. The last time I finished sketching some of the possible skins that we could have for this new character and the basic shapes. Today I plan to do some rendering on these to make them a bit more realistic, more interesting, have some shading, etc. Where I actually did some additional parts some normal ears, also the eyes and a normal mouth just to make it a bit faster. The previous time I did a basic version of this character. You'd want to have something similar also in your game if you're planning to use skins. You'd want something that is a bit more generic to start with before starting having particular assets, big scarves, gowns or very voluminous hair and stuff like that. Because what happens is like with the dude project that I did a, a while back, the first project that I streamed here, uh, is that uh, because I never had a version of the characters uh, that didn't have uh, the coat on, what happened is that the characters uh, never had the proper body underneath and if I wanted to add a skin that had that, uh, in the end I could not because I did not have the basic pieces. So this time we're doing it properly and I hope that this will be a good reference for when you want to add skins. Okay, enough talking, let's uh, sketch some things. Uh, we also said that the basic uh, color that this was supposed to have um, for the uh, for the common parts it was important to have uh, a skin uh, that was uh, white so that we can uh, obtain every other color from it uh, uh, please see the previous video in case you have doubts and uh, uh, use this sha shading for the rest um, i'll start filling this uh, with white um, okay and then start giving it some basic shading and i want something that won't overlap too much with the face so that it's easier to have some pieces that are a bit more forgiving like uh, opening the mouth wide or having like some patches around the eyes so that the the eyes can open and close especially the area around here uh, we want that area to be neutral if possible and if i want some shading i'll lay it on top on a separate layer rather than doing this shading on the base of the head and uh, i guess i'll paint on these uh, directly normally i use clippings because uh, it's better if i want to tune uh, things but the problem when i use clippings uh, is that uh, i reach the uh, maximum number of layers uh, very quickly so i'm forced uh, to paint uh, on these uh, pretty much like i did uh, on uh, this other spine boy character where i had to uh, paint over every piece uh, like these uh, to be able to not reach the limit which I did not reach, incredibly. So, white, and I have to use the shading color that I established. Okay, it needs to be very faint, very at the bottom. Or I could also just have the light from the top, so that even if the character is flipped, uh, you're not gonna feel it as much. I'll block the alpha on the neck, and also shade the neck, so it's a tad darker. Okay, so for the ears, I think I'm gonna do it something this way. Okay, maybe like this. And then I'll uh, do the same on many other parts until they are all uh, filled. Okay, another tip that I can give you is to avoid putting too many shades in parts that are supposed to overlap. So for example, if I try to shade here, that's gonna result in something bad. And so we want to avoid that. And instead, maybe I can stop around here. So see, as soon as I go over these parts of the joints, it's gonna look bad. So I'll just uh, have uh, maybe something very faint like this. Okay, without passing on those parts. Where there's the joints uh, here, we cannot paint. So maybe we can paint, uh, because this part is uh, is under, it's fine to paint here. Again, here they join, so I don't want to press too much there. And instead, maybe I have something very faint, very light like this. I want a little bit of shadow here, because the head is supposed to have a little bit of shadow as well. But I have to stay away from the joints again. The nice thing is that I can kind of shade this in its entirety like this. Uh, 
I'll tint this hair here just to see how it, this is gonna look brown. What happens if I have some yellow? So I can add some variations in the colors. When I deactivate this, it's gonna look like this to uh, make the surface a bit more interesting rather than having everything exactly the same color. Another thing that I like to do when I keep separate layers is to have two colors for the shadow, another more pink-ish, so that then instead I can just have this pink, maybe in just some parts, it creates uh, some interesting variations too. Now you know about my secrets. Then when it's multiplied with the color, it kind of looks like this. I think I'm gonna do a pass where I use all of these colors. So maybe I'll add this pink-ish here on the ears. And I'm gonna add some more details. I think I desperately need the shadows for the hair here. Something like this. Okay, so it doesn't look as detached. And I'll add um, some pencil sketches on top, I think. Here, new layer. Okay, to add a little bit more of definition. Also details like these that made this hair special. Okay, and now time to make it consistent with everything else. I need to add the border, the same border around everything. Okay, so that when it rotates afterwards, it's gonna look fine. And then it's covered and it's also fine. Generic smile, I'm gonna do a new layer where I do it in that sketchy style. Because here I wanted to have some skin tone. Maybe I'll use the dark skin tone, just to see how it looks. Ta -da! Okay. I'm just gonna fill this layer. Oh yeah. Multiply. And it looks nice! Okay, and that makes it easier for me to see if I'm doing mistakes uh, on other part. This tells me that I need to multiply these two, if I want it to work with every skin color. Maybe this one too. Maybe I add a little reflection on the nose, so it's cuter. This yellow. Eee! With the shading color. Okay, I just shade it like this. And then I change to multiply. Well, that's nice! Okay, I think I like this shape. I'll go back to that pretty color that I was using. So now I'm creating the upper part of the eye. Then for the eyes, there is this trick that I mentioned in some other stream that one can create, I'm gonna use red so it's very visible, a patch around this that looks uh, like this. I'll disable momentarily these parts so that I can cover them nicely. And we want something like this around the eyes. This way we can mask the pupil and the iris inside them without needing to add a clipping mask, a clipping inside spine, which would consume a lot of uh, the uh, resources of the hardware. Then there's the lower side that I want to feel. I'm gonna use another very visible color. Okay, then if I have something like this, uh, at least the eye can have some leeway, some room to look down or stuff like that. In uh, the final version, they are gonna be white because I'm gonna thin them inside spine. So I'll block the alpha, fill it with white. I'll block the alpha on this too and fill it with white. I'm gonna create a temporary layer for this group, duplicate this and fill. Then let's shade the inside of the eye and add the pupil. So for the inside of the eye, I like to have the shading on a separate layer because this way you can have the pupil also receive that light. Okay. Shading needs to be multiply mode, which is gonna be recognized by the export script, by the way. So you can leave it in multiply and it's gonna be applied also in spine. And now I can tint the iris red. I'm gonna shade a little bit more the iris. 
Okay, so then when I activate a color, it's gonna be red like this. Let's try other colors. Ooh, that's really nice in green. Reference eyebrow. I think the last thing that I need is some cheeks blush in multiply mode. Okay, red is usually a great color for these. I'll use a very intense red, but very light. So without the skin color, it's gonna look like this. It's so faint, one can't almost see it, but it's there. First of all, I'll paint uh, the, the middle part. So I'll disable the front arm. Okay, now I just sketch the clothes on top. Would be cool to sort of keep the shape, so I'm gonna keep them slightly transparent so I can see a little bit better what is happening. I think I'll cut this. So I know I used a very big canvas in the beginning, now I'm going to cut it. Because whatever, if I can't use it, what's the point? This will give me so many more layers. As soon as I cut it, I'll have like double the number of layers. So it is worth it. Leave room on top. I have to verify that I did not cut parts. <gasps> I was so close. I'm going to create this skin in here. And then I'm gonna create, I think, a file for each skin. The dog is here! Ciao, Luna! Dog. Look. There she is. Look at these floppy ears. Yay! Okay, I'll leave her free. Oh, oh now I can see all my mistakes. I think I have to redo some parts. <gasps> what did I do here? So, well, this is where we have arrived. Thank you so much for staying with me until the end of today's stream. I will see you again next Tuesday. If in the meanwhile you have suggestions, uh, let me know. I'll try to go a bit further with these uh, offline so that I don't take forever to finish it because it takes some time. But at least I showed you uh, some of the process so you can understand how this works. And yeah, I will see you again next Tuesday. Bye-bye.